welcome back to your favorite hangout place, the Space School Log, otherwise known as PPSW, and today we're back with another Star Wars theory. Who would have guessed? Anyways, today we're talking about what would have happened if Anakin Skywalker remembered what the sun told him on Mortis. So, to, to fill in the blanks for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about or didn't watch the Clone Wars, Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Ahsoka Tano all ended up on a planet called Mortis. What happened after they arrived was their interaction with the Ones. The Ones were extremely forced to individuals that have been around in the Star Wars universe for millions of years. The Ones are the embodiment of the Force. The Father is Balance, the Son is Darkness, and the Daughter is the Light. When the three Jedi arrived on Mortis, they encountered the Daughter. As time progressed, they were introduced to both the Son and the Father. The Sun wanted to harness the Chosen One, Anakin Skywalker, for darkness. The Sun revealed the truth of what Anakin Skywalker would become as Darth Vader in the future. The knowledge that Anakin was given by the Sun turned him to the dark side and into wielding that power that he could become the use in Revenge of the Sith. Obi-Wan and Anakin fought on Mortis, but after some time, the Father was able to bring Anakin back from the dark side, uh, bring him back into the balance as the Chosen One, but before, all th but before the three Jedi left. The daughter was slain and she died giving life back into Ahsoka. After all of this, the three Jedi didn't remember a thing when they returned to the Venator's class Star Destroyer. And that's where our story begins, right before they enter the Star Destroyer. But before we get into this, please subscribe by doing a lightsaber giveaway when I hit 10k. Three lightsabers going away, so subscribe if you want one. And also, hit up the voice actor that we have. He'll be featured in tomorrow's video, so stay tuned for that. I'm super excited for it. I just got the lines and I'm like, stoked. I'm like super excited. So link is down below. Go check him out. Concordia Jedi. Let's get into the theory. Instead of forgetting everything, Anakin would remember everything that happened. Not all at once though. When they return to their shuttle in space being contacted by Captain Rex, they were awake and confused. But not Skywalker. He remembered. After responding to Captain Rex and turning off their communications so that they could enter the hangar of the Star Destroyer, Anakin would turn to his fellow Jedi and ask them what they remembered. Obi-Wan would give him a blank stare and ask what he meant by that, and Ahsoka would be equally as confused. Anakin would tell them about what they had just encountered and had experienced with the Ones. Anakin then told them that the truth of his future was revealed to him and that he was worried about the pain that he could cause on the galaxy. He first saw the fall of the Jedi and not just that, but him becoming Darth Vader. Anakin saw him and Obi-Wan fighting, he saw everything that he would do to destroy not just the Jedi, but the entire galaxy. Anakin was aware of what possibilities awaited him if he continued down his path, and he told his friends that he didn't want any of that to happen. Now, he didn't reveal the plans to them, or what he saw to them, he just kind of said, like, these, there's some bad things that are going to happen if I continue down this path. So he feared for what he could do if he were to follow what the sun had shown him. Remember, Anakin Skywalker was a good man. Anakin Skywalker cared a lot about his friends and his loved ones uh, deeply. He, he was very passionate about caring for people. And with this knowledge on his mind, it's reasonable to say that he would be very concerned about what he could do to stop that. This wouldn't be influenced by anything Palpatine did, obviously. Palpatine wanted Anakin to join the dark side, but that plan was still in the long run. There was still the work up until Revenge of the Sith until he would complete his plan. At this point, Anakin wasn't irredeemable. At this point, Anakin still has the ability to change his future. And though there is an old saying that says if you try to change your future, you're going to cause it to happen, uh, we're not going to follow those rules today. As the starship gets closer and closer to the Ven Venator-class Star Destroyer, Anakin's master, Obi-Wan, sees the fear and pain in Anakin's eyes. He can feel it from Anakin's presence. What Anakin has seen, whatever it is that Obi-Wan and Ahsoka don't remember, is causing Anakin a lot of pain. Anakin turns to the Jedi and tells them that he would like to consult with Master Yoda. And he believes that if he can put a stop to this, he can resolve what he learned on Mortis. As the Jedi land in the hangar bay, Anakin would run to his quarters and contact Coruscant. Master Yoda would answer with concern crawling down his face. He could sense that Skywalker was troubled, that Skywalker had discovered something truly devastating. Anakin would tell the Grand Master about his encounter with the Ones on Mortis. Anakin then told Master Yoda the, about the Sun, who showed Anakin the future. A galaxy where Anakin was more machine than man. A galaxy where he had killed all of his friends at the temple. A galaxy where he was the most feared being in existence. Yoda was in shock of what Skywalker told him and spoke softly to him, telling him that he was going to meditate on this and telling Skywalker to return to Coruscant. Anakin would nod and tell him, yes, master, of course. Falling to his knees in his quarter, Obi-Wan would ring him, and Obi-Wan would run in to find his apprentice on his knees. Just absolute mess. Anakin at his worst, right? And 
Anakin and Obi-Wan would have a nice bonding moment here, and I think Obi-Wan would be very consoling to Anakin, telling him to trust in the Force, that it will guide you, it will be by your side till the end, and that he, as an Obi-Wan, will be by Anakin's side until the end. Of course, this was comforting to Anakin. I mean, their bond was unbreakable. They were a brotherhood, but he also still had those memories of what happened on Mustafar in his mind, in that future sense. Upon arrival to Coruscant, Anakin was escorted by his apprentice and his master back to the Jedi Temple, ignoring a request by the Chancellor to see Anakin. The three took Anakin to the Jedi Council chambers, where Anakin was presented to the Jedi Council. Anakin spoke of a vision he had, a vision where the Jedi would fall at the end of the Clone Wars from within the Republic, like what Obi-Wan had been told so long prior on Geonosis. The war would be won, but at the cost of the Jedi, and Anakin would lead the new growing empire. Some of the Jedi would obviously be skeptical, and some would be outraged, though others would be calm. Anakin would tell them about the Ones. The Ones were powerful, more powerful than anything. But the Sun killed the sister, offsetting the balance in the Force. Anakin could restore the balance, but it had to be done right. The Jedi needed to work towards bringing balance to the galaxy, but were they too far gone? Windu asked Anakin Skywalker where this dark side emanated from. Where in the Republic could someone have enough power to overthrow not just the Republic, but the Jedi as well? The Chancellor came to mind for several of the Council members, but they didn't want to speak it out loud. Anakin expressed to the Council that he loved everyone at the Temple, and he loved the Order. And he fought to keep not just his friends, but the people in the galaxy safe. The Council would tell Anakin to take a seat in the Council Chamber. At a seat, one of the empty seats in the council chamber, just to meditate. They didn't want to let him out of their sight, so they kept him in the council chambers. Anakin would find one of the few empty seats in the council chamber and sit silently. Now, this happened before Obi-Wan faked his death, so let's just remember that he hasn't lost all of his trust for the council yet. Anakin hasn't had to deal with the loss of Obi-Wan Kenobi and then realize that Obi-Wan was just lying to him in the end. So that is a very crucial thing I want you guys to remember at this point in the story because I think that's a very big point of what made Anakin so distrustful of the, the Jedi. Anakin thought back to Mortis, passing through memories, passing through all the suffering caused. But where did it emanate from? Where was the source of all this turmoil laying on a bed of sulfur above a river of lava? You were my brother, Anakin! I loved you! Anakin was always troubled by this, that line. It just stuck to him. There was so much the son told him about Anakin's foresight into the future. There was so much that the son told him, and Anakin's foresight into the future was incredible, even without the si even without the son's assistance. But there was so much, so many facts about this dystopian future that had passed through him within an instant, slaughtering the Separatist leaders Padme pregnant, and the flames of the Jedi Temple behind him. The Jedi Temple, the limbs of the younglings, what have I done, an amethyst blade. It's not the Jedi way. The oppression of the Sith, Anakin thought. Within his memory, his eyes passed down from Master Windu, and he saw the Chancellor, defenseless and burnt to a crisp. Anakin thought back a little further, seeing lightning rain from the Chancellor's hands. Anakin rose from his seat as if he were possessed. Windu and Yoda darted their eyes at young Skywalker, waiting for him to say anything. Obi-Wan pressed, Anakin, what is it? Are you alright? Anakin opened his eyes and turned to his master and said, I will bring balance to the Force. Anakin turned and raised a hood over his head and walked from the council chambers. The council knew that Anakin was going to do something irrational. They all leapt to their feet, but Anakin had already departed down the elevator shaft. They waited for it to return. Anakin was ready to do what he needed to do. He walked with purpose, hiding under his cloak. Ahsoka saw him, but dared not interject. Rather, she followed him. As the elevator from the council chambers opened, Aunt Obi Wan ran out ahead of his fellow council members. Anakin was moving with speed and found himself at a shuttle, telling the clone trooper to take him to the Senate building, and also telling Ahsoka to stay behind. She was confused but obeyed. Obi Wan came darting around the corner, followed closely by Windu, Plo Koon, and Kit Fisto. They were too late, but they asked Ahsoka where Anakin was going, and she replied with the Senate building. As the other council members rounded the corner with the Grand Master, the entire present Jedi Council got on board an LAAT and made way for the Senate building. Anakin entered the Chancellor's office unannounced, catching the Chancellor off guard. But he knew, Palpatine knew, that Anakin had anger brewing. Palpatine would look over and tell Anakin what a pleasant surprise it was to see him. And Anakin looked from his cloak. For the first moment since he left the temple, he looked up. He said to Palpatine, You're the Sith Lord. 
Palpatine was caught off guard by the statement, but responded with diligence. What do you mean, my boy? You know the dark side, don't you? If one is to be knowledgeable, they must understand all aspects of both life and the Force. This includes the dark side of the Force. Anakin stood silently, and Palpatine rose from his desk grinning. I can show you. It'll make you more powerful than any Jedi. Anakin's face seethed with anger. He felt the presence of the Jedi Council. They cut off faster than he anticipated. Anakin unlashed his lightsaber while Palpatine was looking out the window. Igniting the blade, Anakin whipped it at Palpatine, who with a turn of his hand stopped the blade in the middle of the room. I can show you the nature of the dark side, Anakin. Anakin, through his anger, pulled the saber back towards him and walked towards the Chancellor. He raised the blade and Palpatine knew it was do or die. With two golden blades, he stopped Skywalker in his tracks with a perfect block. Anakin was furious, a friend, a mentor, a father figure manipulating him, lying to him. Palpatine could defeat Anakin at this point. Anakin, though with the dark side was powerful, Palpatine was much stronger. But Palpatine being so focused on Anakin didn't notice the Jedi Council's arrival. He stopped his duel to see a dozen lightsabers igniting. The Council was there to help the Chosen One bring balance to the Force. Palpatine created a Force storm that engulfed him and Skywalker, separating him from the other Jedi. You can have true power, Anakin. Use my knowledge, I beg you. Anakin stopped, and Palpatine felt hopeful for the downfall of Skywalker. But before the grin could fully cross his face, a blue blade ran through his chest. Never. I am a Jedi. I will never betray my friends. The Force Storm ended, and the Chancellor fell behind his desk. The Jedi saw Anakin emanating with light as if all the darkness within him had left. Anakin looked like a changed man. He looked at his fellow Jedi, and of course, Obi-Wan was the first one to greet him. Are oh, you all right? Yes, Master. Good. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. Obi-Wan laid a hand on Anakin's shoulder. Yoda thought of what was to be done regarding the Senate and the Clone Wars, but without the Republic having any true leadership, they would have to strike at the Separatists. Dooku would have to be captured by Anakin and Obi-Wan, and where he would be tried in front of the galaxy. Revealing that Palpatine began the war, the Separatist Council would sign a peace treaty with the Republic and reunite. The droids would be shut down, and Grievous would be hunted down and destroyed by Plo Koon and Mace Windu over Malastare. Anakin would find himself at the helm of the Jedi Council. As a Jedi Master, as Ahsoka would become a knight, Anakin would continue with his secret life and continue to keep balance within the Force, leading the Jedi to triumph over slavery and crime and separate from the Republic politically. So what do you guys think? This was a bit different. Um, I try to make different stories. I know you guys know that. Um, honestly, I haven't read over this since now, and it's the first time I read over it. I, th I think it's pretty cool. Um, I know the last ending scene happened really fast. I've expressed this in the past. I I'm not gonna lie, I get kind of bored of rewriting how we kill Palpatine because it happens every other episode. So uh, I kind of rushed through it on this one. I kind of like how it went. I like how Anakin just went straight for killing Palpatine instead of stalling around and playing the little game with him. He just kind of was like, nope, fuck you. You're done, right? So I, I, I kind of like where that went here uh, in, in all retrospect. That's probably my favorite part is that it didn't dwell on the scene between Anakin and, Pal and Palpatine for too long. And then I also like that the, the council was more kind and open towards Anakin and keeping him in the council chambers while he was meditating on something so deep and uh, devious. Rather, I think it would be really interesting if Anakin did remember the past. Of course, this could go in many, many different ways. Anakin tried to prevent the, the future from happening in Revenge of the Sith, and obviously that didn't work out for him. Let's, let's just be real here. That didn't work out for him. And I did mention this earlier in the video that if you try to change your future or change your, your destiny, then you're going to end up causing it. And since this wasn't a defined destiny, rather just a vision of what was meant to happen if all was out to plan right, it would happen. So, in this situation, we're just saying that Anakin literally just didn't do that. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think down below. Did you guys like this or did you not? Let me know. Anyways, guys, I love you all. Spread the love. Stay tuned for the next video. Don't forget to subscribe for a free lightsaber. And always remember, though, may the Force be with you.